Okay, good afternoon, SFCC Bridge family. This morning, I was in a rush, so I was not able to finish well what I want to share with you regarding the main building revitalization project. And that's why I take this opportunity and liberty to do the recording. Hopefully, you can have a better pictures. And of course, that comes with a little bit longer time. Uh, the recording I did for Cantonese and Mandarin is between 15 to 70 minutes. So I hope that I can do it within that range. Uh, first of all, this is the project I share this morning. Um, to give you guys some background, here's our church building. The main building, it was built 31 years ago, 1989. And it used to be a um, gas station before we built uh, the church. And so it was initially had the own uh, purpose in mind, especially the main sanctuary is for the worship uh, services. And also because of that, and, and also because in SF, the space is precious and limited. So that's why, as you can see in the next picture, uh, we are kind of like sort of space, right? Uh, you can see this is our garage. Uh, we use that on Sunday for a lumber, a lumber or, or more than one purposes. For example, in Sunday afternoon, we play ping pong here. In Sunday morning, we have the Sunday school and even children uh, sometimes have gatherings here. And you can see we put tables um, for our reopening. So uh, people would come in here to check in. Uh, that is the new normal and new arrangement. So you see our space, including the garage, is so occupied. And like you see here, even the, the garage becomes part of the space for storage as well. And this is the picture I want to show you and draw your attention to this big wet circle. Here is the uh, drainage uh, for the storm water from the building. Last year in December 7, uh, that is a Saturday afternoon, all of a sudden I received a phone call saying that, hey, Pastor Sam, you got to come back to the church because there was heavy flooding in the church. So that's why I went and also uh, check out what's happening in the church. And uh, so, and then that's what I saw um, in, in the afternoon. So it was all flooded, not only here in the main garage area, the water was uh, coming out from the fall drain. And also we found that water was uh, everywhere on the ground level or the garage level, including the children area. Um, so uh, we find that later on what's going on was that uh, water coming out also from the four drains in the bathrooms, in the two bathrooms uh, that's coming out um, from the floor. So the, the high chance or, or the culprit is that the, there was a high intensity of water pouring into our building or the area at that time. And our rooftop uh, water system is to connect all the water. Instead of going out the building immediately, uh, it was connected through the internal pipes inside the church building. And then before it was being discharged, it goes through uh, the, the system here. And because of the high intensity, the system was not able to discharge it all at once. So that's why there was a, a bad fault and then coming out from the fall train. All right, so this is something, um, the likely reason, and also hopefully in the upcoming project, we will check out what's going on from our water drainage system. And if needed, we would like to improve that as well. And because of the flooding, all the carpets, and most of them were, were wet. Um, the good thing is the water was a clear water and too much of the damage. We just clean the uh, carpets and then uh, dry it again so that we can still use it. But still, it's not a very pleasant situation. We don't want the water to come back, honestly speaking. So we, uh, again, would like to, uh, through this project, to find out what's the reason uh, behind. And also, you know, all our children's rooms have been uh, here since 31 years ago. And uh, we would like to upgrade it as update it as well. And this is our social hall. Even though you, you see the lighting seems pretty good, but then, you know, initially um, the social hall is only for the social function. It's not intended as the worship place, like right now we are doing it 
or Mandarin, and also the modern Cantonese service. And because of that, the sound or the acoustic is not very, very good, uh, very easily. If you are worshiping here in the social hall, you are able to pass the sound upstairs into the, the English service or the uh, Cantonese news service. Likewise, the other way as well, vice versa. And also this is um, not so uh, in a sense of very sacred. Uh, you cannot easily see the course. And usually the course seems to be uh, recessed at the back of the stage. So with this uh, revitalization project, we would really like to update uh, the social hall as well. Um, other place you see, this is our main lobby area. Um, indeed, we do not have a um, big enough lobby. Very often I see you folks uh, after the English service, you guys would hang out instead of here because this is a very tiny and highly contrasted area. Instead, you guys would hang out outside on the street. Uh, that's, um, that's not something very desirable, especially the weather is not so good. And, and also from retaining the, retaining the people in the church perspective. So that's why uh, since day one I was here, I was praying and thinking how can we better use our facilities to update it to better serve the purpose for building up the church. So that's why in our plan, I will, I'm going to show you guys in, in a minute, uh, like we also want to expand the lobby area. All right, so with the news of the uh, SF government uh, back to end of 2018, um, they, they make a new rule. Uh, they remove or they eliminate the parking minimums citywide, right? That is something a uh, good news. Uh, I mean, at the beginning, the city government was not thinking about SF spaces. You guys are net of space. So that's why I want to give you more space so that you can uh, have more, more space to use. That was not the case. Instead, it was because uh, the city government realized the, the house, uh, housing issues and also they want to promote uh, more use of the public transportation or more cycling. So instead, just get rid of all the cars. So that's why they, they want to eliminate eliminate the minimum parking space. And because of that, we will benefit um, because right now our garage, that is around 2000 square feet, we are going to be able to convert that into some uh, permitted use or usable space. And at the end of last year, 2019, uh, we did a preliminary um, uh, uh, talk or meeting with the city officials. In principle, they agree and they were very glad to see our project because uh, A, um, the, the egress or ingress will be improved, the evacuation route will be improved. And um, that can also provide more uh, usable space for the congregants here in the church. But then, you know, what happened in 2020? Mm -hmm. In 2020, we see there was a um, pandemic that happened right uh, back to March. It seems a long time ago, but actually it was like seven, seven months before us. And because of the pandemic, initially we planned to have a series on building up the house of God, physical church building, just like right now we are preaching on. Initially that was in April um, around that time. And because of the pandemic, we postponed until uh, this moment of time. And meanwhile, our project team, our design team, have been very diligent and uh, we have been working on all the details uh, trying to put on and address the comments the feedback that we received in the past two years including you guys uh, we had the the town hall i mean the the meeting with the ministry team from the english mandarin and cantonese and also uh, different ministry team um, as well as the individuals you still remember in the cnt we did the survey um, like one to two years ago, we asked you guys, what do you want to see the church in future? What's your aspiration, including the church building? How are we able to better use the facilities um, so that the ministry can be relevant, can be impactful, can be um, speaking to the people, right? So um, under the pandemic, everything seems to be different, including the things we look at things. Uh, we, we saw some facts in, in that, I mean, indeed, those are facts we cannot ignore. For example, 
some of us are uh, cutting their hours of work, even some of us uh, were laid off, uh, right? Uh, this is actually something very could be very um, uh, frightening uh, facts, and, and even more so, we are not sure what's going to happen in future in the post-pandemic era. But also, I would like you to draw the attention um, to other facts as well, not just that is all the facts. There's other facts, like there are people I know that uh, they are getting more busy because of the pandemic. Um, some One person shared to me at least um, got uh, the workloads 40% more. And then other people, they got promotion. Other people getting employed as well. So just like I'm saying, uh, the worst of the time, and at the same time, this is the best of the time. The best of the time, the worst of the time. So, and also we are called a lot of facts-based community. Instead, we are also called as a faith-based community. What does that mean? That means we are also called to walk by faith, to see what God is doing among us. Like the sermon this morning by Pastor Lam um, from Haggai, his encouragement for us is to be strong and courageous. We look up to God and we are walking together with God. And we trust that when we walk uh, and according to his will, doing something for his purpose, then he is going to bless us. Like this verse from Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God with you wherever you go. This is the the words of exhortation, encouragement um, to Joshua. He was about to lead the Israelites to cross the river to enter into the promised land. So he cannot, he was not able to hold on anything other than God himself, right? Because there was so much of uncertainty unknown in front of him. So what he did is to merely trusting on God, counting on God and follow his uh, footsteps. So in the example of um, conquering Jericho, the city, what he did is to uh, encourage and lead the Israelites to follow God's instruction every day for six days, walk around the city. And then on the seventh day, to walk again seven times. And then at the end of it, shout together. And because of that, the city was all gone. So from this spiritual lesson, we are told that while we know the facts, but we are not merely or, or only based on the facts, but also we are a faith community. We are called, we are encouraged, we are exhorted to be strong and to be courageous. That is actually, I take it as the calling for us. We are not, my, my greatest concern indeed is not about the money. It's not about how many resources or how good we are. Instead, this is a faith journey. How much faith we have, we count on God. We are not counting on ourselves. So this is my exhortation to you guys as well. So I'd like you to join me in this journey. And so that's why in November 15, we are going to have a town hall meeting. Uh, you are welcome, all of you guys uh, coming to join us. Uh, I'm going to go through more details and our team will share more details. And you guys are welcome to share more of your thoughts on this uh, main building revitalization project. And this is the, um, the scheme uh, right now we have. This is the, um, the main build, uh, the multi-purpose area. You see, this is the, um, the main entrance, right? And then this is the main entrance. Okay, here's the, um, the PowerPoint I want to share. There was a little bit um, technical issue. The one I saw was uh, without somehow the details was gone. So that's why I changed with this one uh, with the PDF version. Anyhow, here you go. This is our proposed plan. And you see, this is the main entrance, the new entrance uh, or the ingress or egress from the current garage uh, floor. We are going to call it ground level or ground floor instead of garage floor or garage level. And this improves our evacuation route. So when you come in, you can uh, come into the new multi-purpose hall with few steps. 
or you can um, come in through this um, flat platform, which is raised up about one feet. And then there is a ramp going down uh, to this part. So, and then you can come down from here or you can come this using the existing ramp here to go all the way back. So the light pool is the multi-purpose hall. So you can use it for morning, Sunday morning, the children, uh, big gathering, like for example, for magic show, uh, stuff like that. And also the Sunday school. And then you see, we put some uh, coffee table uh, food here for morning breakfast. And uh, we hopefully with a bigger space, than right now, so brothers and sisters from English, Cantonese, and Mandarin can join together for the first time. And uh, this is the dotted line is the existing wall separating between not us and Christ, but separating the garage and the children area. So we will like to break it down so there will be an easy access from the entrance to the children area. And on top of that, we are going to have at least three to four new rooms. This one, uh, we put a folding partition so that it becomes more flexible, more flexible in terms of the use. If needed, we can turn it into a bigger room. All right. And these areas are the existing rooms. We are also going to update that as well. Uh, the children rooms and then the baby uh, young inference room will be moved to here. And uh, we are going to add a new bathroom uh, over here. And then um, the parents, they can uh, come uh, down up or go up from here. So this is the ground floor. And then this is the first floor where the main entrance will be kept. And, on the, and then on the side entrance, uh, we will slightly modify it to, instead of uh, the ramp, uh, we, we are going to have uh, two steps uh, to go up and then people can come in up to here. And this part is the new lobby. You can see this is as uh, even back, bigger than the current lobby. So we would hope to, to provide more lobby space. And as of the office, uh, this my current office will be reduced so that there will be more office space for more staff, not only here, but also a new part of the office on this side. So that hopefully all the staff can come back to the same building to work. And then we can, um, uh, for better, and easier communication, and more importantly, to build up as a team. So I want uh, to hold white space for all the staff to come back. And this is a new room where brothers and sisters can, can use it to prayer or discipleship to a small group uh, gathering. Uh, so this is something new. And of course, we will update the existing lobby mm -hmm. as well as the uh, kitchen. Uh, we will try to keep uh, the appliances if that can be used. Uh, whereas uh, for those cabinets, we may uh, need to change it. Uh, for the social hall, as I said, uh, we want to improve the acoustic as well as the sacredness uh, of the uh, social hall. And also we want to provide more storage and well-organized space at the back of it. So this is uh, the, the plan uh, right now we got, and below is some uh, rendering. You see, this is uh, from the new lobby, uh, looking back to the uh, existing existing lobby, all right? So this provide more space for you guys to hang out and um, chit chat. And this is the main reception area, um, the entrance, I mean, the, the existing lobby, uh, that will be more organized and tidy. And this one is the multi-purpose hall, uh, where we are looking from the entrance at the garage or, or the ground floor uh, entrance door. And we provide the area for, for counter, like a bar where we can serve food and beverages so that brothers and sisters can hang out here during uh, Sunday, as well as other time of the year, like for different functions. And during the day times, uh, weekdays time, we can use it for community uh, ministry as well, like for example, after school. So these are some of the plans we have right now. And then um, because at this moment, um, we cannot move on further because one major obstacle, uh, or obstacle is the MEP, Mechanical, Electrical and Plumbing Engineers and Design. Because uh, we need uh, the con consultant to look at our, especially the ground floor, we need to provide a new HVAC or the ventilation 
and other system the pumping we want to take this opportunity to look into that so uh, the g board the governing board uh, would make a call to whether to hire a consultant uh, that actually uh, the project team uh, we have been diligently uh, asking for quotation and we got three and this one is the most i mean the best deal so far we can get uh, but uh, i mean in order for us to to move forward we need to to have the uh, support from the G board and and also from the brothers and sisters. So I would highly rec recommend and encourage you to talk to uh, your pastors uh, like Pastor Jonathan, as well as uh, your uh, G board members like uh, Justin, Justin, Justin. <laughs> sorry, Justin. And hopefully Justin will one day become a, a G board member. Um, uh, Eric as well as the to express your views uh, whether there's. Um, positive, negative, uh, supportive, non-supportive. Uh, I highly encourage you, if you are supporting the, the project, uh, you, you share to them because uh, we, we do know different uh, uh, so-called the uh, reservation or, or not so supportive reasons, but we need to hear more from, from those who are uh, showing support to the project. And on November 15th, we are going to have a town hall meeting, uh, Sunday afternoon. So more de details will be released um, so hope you guys can join and give us more feedback. And then the PowerPoint from today will be uploaded to the website. Uh, you can feel free to, to download it and, and look into more details. Thank you very much. And I hope and pray that you have a God-blessed uh, day and uh, upcoming week as well. Thank you very much.